Well, Bob here with Odin's Lock. Or Bob's Van. I'm not sure what channel this goes on. Could be the one. Uh, here's the latest. So I had my transmission cross member put in for the 4L ADE. Had to find some spots to mount to. And I had bought a couple. Well, I bought one other bar. It's made by, uh, I think, uh, Speedway Motors or something. Uh, I don't remember. I'll put it up on the video. But the one was straight. And I don't know what I was thinking. I guess I didn't really know what the angle was going to be of this transmission. So uh, I bought it, and I thought, well, I would make some brackets that would bring it down, and it would hang down. But then the bar itself would be hanging down too low. Start moving around, around so much. Uh, and it would be right about here. So when you're looking at it, it'd stick down pretty far. And then the muffler wouldn't be able to clear it on that side. And this exhaust is gonna change. When I do my V8 exhaust, it's gonna be a dual into one until I uh, switch it over to, you know, uh, dual exhaust completely. I'm just trying to use what I can right now. So I can get this back on the road. I can do all kinds of stuff later on down the road, but. Anyways, I went ahead and sprayed uh, this, uh, that, that bed liner type stuff that's kind of textured. And I had welded the, the flanges on these. You had to weld these. Excuse me. I used a little flux core MIG welder. But uh, I did everything I needed to do. And so you uh, weld it. You, you got to adjust the length of these cross members. I think Speedway is what it was. So you got to adjust the length of it. It comes a little bit long and then you go on ahead and uh, figure out your dimensions and then you cut it down to size. And I tried to get as close to a good straight uh, shot. You know, the more angle you put into uh, a drive shaft, especially one that's got carrier bearing, uh, the, the worse it gets. I mean, you do need some angle because that kind of helps squeeze the lube around uh, the U-joints. From what I've read, I mean, I, I try to do all kinds of figure it out on this before I actually set it in stone on this thing but uh this is a uh, my the rear end of this vehicle is not centered on the axle so it's kind of to the left of it as you can see the way that looks but anyways uh my fingers in the screen so I tried to get in the street as shot as I could the carrier bearing brand there's going to be a little angle because of the grasping angle the one drive shaft and the carrier bearing separates it uh and you know you don't really think about all the little things that uh, you have to take into account when you do stuff like this. You know, uh, you don't want your engine level to the ground. I think that I've seen somewhere three to five degrees for the engine. And so when I was working on this, I was kind of irritated by how angled that engine looks. When you look at the level of the floor, you know, the engine pitches. But I guess that's what it's supposed to be. And uh, of course, you also want oil to flow into the pan, into the the back of the pan and all that but uh you know the carburetor needs to be level from my understanding now you know i you can hear my arguments about well people park on hills people drive up and down hills all the time so it doesn't really matter if the carburetor is level as long as it's level enough for the fuel in the bowl to you know get through the uh the power valve you know that, that pushes it in to, to the ports to the jets but uh Anyways, you know, I think uh, you do kind of want it fairly level. So the intake is not level. You know, the intake will have a pitch, but the actual machine spot has a level of its own. You know, where there, it's actually, you know, higher on this end of the intake than it is on that end. And so when you, what I had to do is I used like a little sign gauge type of setup on the concrete. And then I went ahead and set up a level with that to, knew, to know what that was going to be you know what level should be on top of the engine that's how i figured that out for the carburetor and i just put on the intake and uh, i kind of adjusted the angle of the motor transmission until i had that level on the top of the engine so and it looks like it's not because i'm on a, a grade incline and plus my step van is higher in the back end than it is in the front so like i said it's a lot of another example of all the weird things you got to deal with with this stuff the other thing is I need to uh, do a figuring out of the starter. Let me grab my creeper here. Let's see what's going on with this. So the old transmission, 
was that a 7465? It had a starter that went into the bell housing itself. So the problem is uh, I have to use a different starter. So then you got this parallel uh, stagger bolt patterns you have on these starters. Uh, you know, and you look for the old small block Chevy, I think it's staggered as what would be on this one. I've actually drilled and tapped for all three holes, so it doesn't really matter as long as I have a good, uh, you know, as long as I saw it. And I hear one way is better than the other because it keeps from deflecting, you know, which I don't know if that's a big issue. And I did set my torque converter gap. And that's what I did was I went out to where uh, there's enough gap right now to where an eighth inch fits in easy, but a three sixteenths doesn't. So I, I just wanted between eighth inch and three sixteenths gap. And so you don't see it on the back side, but I, I do have to do uh, washers. Uh, I still got three washers. This has six pads on the torque converter. I only have bolts for three, and I think I'm just going to use three uh, in eye Loctite when I do it. I, this is not actually tight right now. It's, you can see it's kind of loose. I just got to hold it in place. So I need to get another starter. So that's another thing. Uh, and they got some that, uh, you know, are, uh, the, they call them lights or the minis or whatever, where uh, you can actually uh, clock the solenoid so it's in a different spot. So if you have headers, which I'm not gonna put headers on this. I do have the room for them though. I mean, I'm sitting there looking, I have all kinds of room for headers. But uh, I actually like the exhaust manifolds better. I don't know why I think they sound better, but uh, you know, performance wise, I'm not too worried about it. So anyways, so I gotta finish uh, the torque converter uh, bolts and I got my torque converter gaff set. I've one washer is all I really need for this. So I'm gonna do three more. Maybe I'll find uh, the, the bolts and do uh, all, you know, all six, you know, so five more. But uh, I'm, I'm gonna need a starter. I gotta be able to see and shim. Uh, what I'm gonna do is drop the, I'm gonna pre the engine. I'm gonna drop the distributor in and then I'll go ahead and set the, the gap on these. Cause at that point, I'm already, I'm getting pretty close. I just, uh, I spend a lot of time on this uh, transmission cross member. It takes a little bit of time, you know, to get stuff ordered and you don't like what you got. So you had to, you know, go ahead and order a different one. So I need to send the old one back, get my money back, which I bought from Amazon, uh, from Speedway Motors, uh, Amazon store. And, uh, you know, it's free. I think I paid a little bit of shipping just to get it here, you know, within a day or two. Uh, most stuff is free shipping if you got Prime, but so that's where I'm at on this part of it. So, I still gotta put the dipstick in, which I was gonna wait till I got my lines running and get all this stuff figured out. Oh, excuse me. So, that's where I'm at on that. So, I need a starter. Um, I never really looked into this. I didn't know what this was. I guess it's more like a vent. And if it blows oil by, they, some people put tubes on this and just angle it down so you don't get oil all over the top of this. Uh, I also need to do my uh, shifter. And so I figured out uh, what I need. Uh, I need to go get some steel, quarter inch thick, three inch wide. I'm going to do a, a two inch foot, 12 inch platform, or uh, yeah, 12 inch platform, 12 inch down, and then another two inch foot. So I told them 48 inches is what I need, and I'll just cut off whatever I don't need. But I want to get that shifter up high, close, and then I'm going to have it set up so it kind of pulls up against this but the seat needs to be able to rock forward so i'm going to do that now because it's going to be so tall i don't want it rocking this floor may kind of rock a little bit um and it may not once i put the, the cross member here back in but uh i need to get the shifter set because uh also that's the thing about spinning the uh, torque converter and the flywheel i need to make sure i'm in park or neutral you know that way i don't remember how this works if, I, if when i try to spin that if it's going to try to turn the drive shaft or not i got wheel chocks on it but um, I just hadn't really thought about it. So I, I think I'm going to go ahead and do the shifter next, put that on, get that all set. It's a four speed shifter. You know, it's the for a foil AD has a drive, uh, you know, overdrive and then D1, D2, D3. And then uh, I got to figure out the throttle position sensor for this. I think uh, I'm going to make a bracket off the side of the carb and just have its own independent bracket that will work with the throttle position sensor or make them up something like this. I've seen a few different configurations. So that's where I'm at with that. I still got a, I got the power steering pump on on the front, but uh, until I get the manifold on, I can't get that last bracket in. Uh, and that's another thing I need to do. I just figure I go on ahead and uh, I need to do the starter. There's, you know, there's like a, an order you do things. Uh, the exhaust manifolds I need to do, uh, 
yeah that'd be that's coming that's i need to get shifter i need to get everything done underneath so i don't have to be under there other than for the exhaust uh, that would be the one last thing i do is the exhaust when i tie in the, the two manifolds i'm gonna probably cut it right about here cut out from the weld forward you know and that way my old exhaust i think it comes down about here i just tied into that and i'll do a dual exhaust later later on i'm just not gonna worry about it right now so that's that that's where i'm at that's the latest i'm gonna uh try to post some more stuff as soon as i get further along today's friday uh i don't know what today 28th 29th whatever it is uh, i think today's friday the 28th but uh, i just uh kind of had about two weeks of not doing anything because i was waiting on this cross member stuff and then it been hot and then it would rain and then uh finally got some mosquito stuff because mosquitoes are just biting the hell out of me i haven't even tried this yet i'm gonna try this I've seen a van lifer uh they use this and it's not supposed to be as bad for you i mean to me deet you know the d-e-e-t stuff is the best but it's also probably pretty harmful so with that that's all i got for right now everything's coming together slowly but surely anyways i got that cross member in that was a big deal need to pick up starter but i'm gonna do the flywheel first or the flex plate first and then uh, the starter and then uh do the manifolds uh and i guess you know uh yeah the shifter probably i need to do before i do the flywheel because i need to know what gear i'm in when i st start rotating stuff i don't know if it really matters i it's i'm so used to a manual transmission you know you just put stuff in neutral with uh this with the 4l ade uh you know if i rotate that i don't know if it's going to try to spin the drive shaft you know if you try to start it while it's in gear it may try to lug the engine forward well i'm not going to try to start it of course but if i try to crank that i don't want the extra resistance of it trying to push i need to make sure i'm in park or neutral or you know take drive shaft off which i don't want to do it right now so it's all all put together i'll just uh put my shifter on and i'll know where i'm at on my gears then i'll finish the bolts and the starter and then uh, the manifolds and then the carburetor so that's where i'm at sorry to ramble on and uh, me shaking this camera around. Sorry about that, too. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.